stables, factions, teams. I kind of always thought of them as wrestling gang. A group of wrestlers decide to get together, look out for one another, and accomplish a singular goal. It's simple and it works. Sometimes it can breathe new life into a wrestler who may seem past their prime. Stables can also bring a new up-and-comer into the spotlight. And as awesome a concept as the wrestling gang is, sometimes it can be bad. Some groupings that on paper should be a license to print money couldn't drive flies to an outhouse. And then there are some that literally make you think the bookers or creative team are doing drugs. I'm Walt, the most gangster nerd on YouTube, and these are the 10 worst stables in wrestling history. Hey, real quick standby, a few groups you won't be seeing here. The X Factor, they were actually good. The Job Squad, it wasn't their fault. The Nation of Domination, also good. And Jimmy Hart's first family, they never got a chance. Carry on. Number 10, the Disciples of Apocalypse, Los Barrinquas, and the Truth Commission. A three-way tie may seem a bit much, but hear me out. During the gang wars of the Attitude Era, there was a lot going on. The Nation of Domination would first kick out Crush, and later kick out Savio Vega. Both went on to form their own gang, with Crush forming the Disciples of Apocalypse, a renegade biker gang, and Savio forming Los Barinquas, a Puerto Rican stereotype gang. Now, if that didn't sound good enough for you, Mix in a South African nationalist militant gang, and you got a hot mess. These three tie for the position on this list, unfortunately because each was completely unforgettable for all the wrong reasons. These gangs fought with each other for a little while, with absolutely nothing coming out of it. Well, the Disciples and the Los Bariquas would receive worst feud of the year from Wrestling Observer, so there's that. Number 9, the West Texas Rednecks. WCW was really starting to find its stride there in 99, and that stride being a race to bankruptcy. This group contained some serious talented wrestlers, such as Kurt Henning, Barry and Kendall Wyndham, Bobby Duncan Jr., and the real legend, Curly Bill, aka Vincent, aka Virgil, because of course he's a natural fit. Everything this group did went wrong, everything. They were supposed to be the antagonists to the No Limit Soldiers when they briefly showed up in WCW. But due to the Rednecks being outnumbered and the annex of the Soldiers, the crowds would turn on No Limit and embrace the Rednecks. Soon after, to generate heat, the Rednecks would also record and perform a country song titled Rap Is Crap. The song got over, even being played on some southern radio stations. The team would go on to feud with the Filthy Animals, another hip-hop inspired team, with nothing of significance coming out of it. A high point would be their winning of the tag titles from Harlem Heat, though they would lose them right back two weeks later. But all in all, a bad idea that almost turned into something better, and if handled correctly, could have become great, instead became another testament to the infamy of the end of WCW. For A, the Old Age Outlaws. WCW in 2000 was hard to watch, with storylines that didn't make sense and championships being tossed like hot potatoes. An example of this, the Old Age Outlaws. Vince Russo really thought that this was a good idea. Consisting of Arn Anderson, Paul Orndorff, Larry Sabisco, and Terry Funk, put together the feud against the equally bad NWO Silver and Black, and ripping off the name of the popular WWE tag team, failure was imminent. This group, like others on this list, did nothing of significance, and that's a shame considering the legends that made up the group. Perhaps if put together in the 80s or 90s, this could have been an awesome stable like the Horsemen or the Dangerous Alliance. But no, this was the end of WCW. Not a lot made sense. Number 7, the Baldies. Paul Heyman is one of the best creative minds in the history of wrestling. However, his ECW did go out of business, and with a group like the Baldies, it's not hard to figure out how. This group consisted of Angel Medina, Vic Grimes, Tony DeVito, PN News, and Red Dog. A unification of wrestlers with the impressive similarity of being bald. Which, to be fair, was a big deal in 1999. Stone Cold and Goldberg were both bald. Don't remember the Baldies? I can't blame you as they had the charisma of a dead squirrel and the star power of a block of wood. 
The group's greatest claim to fame may be their feud with New Jack. If being completely forgettable wasn't good enough, you factor in blatant copying, as they would steal the epic deadly line, they shall not mess with the baldies. This grouping never won anything significant, and when ECW closed up shop, the baldies faded away with it. Number 6. The Misfits in Action Towards the end of WCW, we seen a lot of bad ideas become reality. Vince Russo was writing WCW into oblivion. One of the ways he did that? The Misfits in Action. A team up of mismatched personalities in camo. Now being a militant parody wasn't that bad in and of itself, but when you give them the initials M.I.A., you're falling into the territory of Tasteless. The individual wrestlers involved also had to deal with new names. We seen Hugh Morris become General Huge Erection Cringe, Van Hammer became Private Stash, uh, Booker T became G.I. Bro, Chavo Guerrero became Lieutenant Loco, and Lash LaRue became Corporal Cajun. They would later add Tylene Buck as Major Guns, get the joke? This grouping somehow managed to win some championship gold, however, after the release of Private Stash, the betrayal of Major Guns, along with the departure of G.I. Bro from the group, this experiment in wrestling combined with bad puns disbanded and good thing as WCW closed up soon after. Number 5. The York Foundation Okay, this is absolute gold. A group of professional wrestlers who used computer analysis to figure out how to beat their opponents. You can't beat that. Don't try. Now, this would normally scream WWF in the late 80s, maybe the 90s, but this actually went down in WCW. Starting out with Mike Rotunda, inheriting a lot of money from Ani Kayfabe. He would change his name to Michael Wall Street. He then joined up with Terry Runnels, aka Alexandra York. And Miss York had a computer program that could analyze any opponent and provide a perfect strategy to win. Yes, really. Michael Wall Street would move on from WCW, so Miss York would recruit other wrestlers, such as Ricky Morton, Terry Taylor, and Tommy Rich, also recruiting Mr. Hughes as a bodyguard. Unfortunately, it seemed the computer program got hacked. The group did hold a six-man championship, but that's not really that great of an accomplishment. They faded into obscurity after that, and I'm willing to bet you never heard of them before I told you about them. Number four, the corporate ministry. The corporation was great. The ministry was great. Vince was great. The buildup was great. But the corporate ministry was not great. During the gang wars of the Attitude Era, there was a lot going on. The corporation, led by Vince, had been feuding with Stone Cold for a year. Adding to his problems, The Undertaker was now trying to come at him. Shane decided he could do better, so he kicked his father out of the corporation. Soon after, The Undertaker would kidnap Stephanie McMahon in a bizarre wedding sacrifice thing. It's still excellent, look it up. Stone Cold would save her. After this, Shane and The Undertaker would merge the corporation and the ministry together to form the Corporate Ministry, possibly the most uncomfortable grouping of talent ever. And for a short period of time, The Undertaker kept hinting about serving a higher power, which turned out to be Vince himself, Swerve. This didn't last long at all, and I mean, how could it? A team consisting of Vince, Shane, Undertaker, along with the Acolytes, China, Triple H, Viscera, Bossman, and best of all, the Mean Street Posse. You remember the sweater vest guys? Nothing came out of it after this, and the whole thing was gone soon after. Number 3. The Oddities You know the Monday Night Wars, the Attitude Era, the late 90s. Whatever you call this period, wrestling fans seen some crazy stuff. And you can't find a more fitting example of crazy stuff than the oddities. A group put together by Don Callis, the legendarily bad WWE manager, The Jackal. Consisting of Kurgan, Silva, Goga, who was John Tenna in a mask, and Luna Vachon. The idea at first was supposed to be some kind of an evil freak show. They didn't really do anything of notice at first. However, once WWE got rid of Jackal, Sable, yes, Sable would step in and take the group in a new direction becoming a very well-liked team of baby faces. They would go on a winning streak. The Insane Clown Posse wanted to get in on the action. However, it seemed just as quickly as the group got over, Vince Russo had to ruin it. 
First have an ICP turn on the group, George the Animal Stillwood didn't join up, but nothing would come of it, and later, for no real reason, Luna Fashan just abandoned the group to go and feud with Sable. They wouldn't really do much after this, and by March of 99, the oddities were gone from WWE. Number 2. Sports Entertainment Extreme S.E.X. How incredibly clever. And considering the promotion's name at the time was T.N.A. Also very intelligent. Who could possibly be behind such a brilliant idea? None other than Vince Russo. Shocker. Look, the TLDR here is take the NWO, DX, in the late 90s, remove everything good, add Jeff Jarrett, and what you're left with is this. It's a shame, but somehow this made WWE's invasion storyline look halfway decent. Number 1. The Dungeon of Doom 1995 was a dark time in professional wrestling, and you are hard pressed to find something more definitive of why that year was dark than the Dungeon of Doom. Looking like a gang of Power Ranger villains, with the cliche goal of ending Hulkamania, consisting of some legends and some bad ideas, with the mysterious Master, aka King Curtis Iakea, began speaking out to Kevin Sullivan. Master would rename Kevin Sullivan the Taskmaster. At first, it was Taskmaster, the Zodiac, Kamala the Ugandan Giant, the Shark, and Ming. Over time, the group would incorporate many more, introducing the Giant, Hugh Morris, and most famously, the Yeti. As time went on, Lex Luger was in the group, but not really. One Man Gang, as well as Conan joined, but weren't actually in the group. But at the same time, the Barbarian joined with Ming as the Faces of Fear, and was a full-blown member. The faction would feud with Hogan for a while, having a War Games match. Later, the Dungeon of Doom would join forces with the Four Horsemen, and apparently New Line Cinema, bringing in Tom Lister, aka the Z Gangster. This super bad super group would then go on to lose to Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage in a Tower of Doom match. After this, the dungeon completely fell apart. The giant and Dungeon of Doom ally Big Bubba would join the NWO. The shark would cut an iconic promo where he dropped his hokey gimmick and began using his real name, John Tenta. The Zodiac was revealed to be Hogan's spy, the Booty Man, and perhaps finally, Kevin Sullivan was defeated by Chris Benoit in a retirement match. Though comically legendary in hindsight, the Dungeon of Doom was goofy, over gimmicky, and ended disastrously. And even though it holds a special place in the hearts of 90s wrestling fans, this list would be incomplete without it. Now I hope you learn from this and get the gist, cause that was the list. Don't waste my time, if you're gonna drop a dime, Leave it on that comment line. I'm Walt, the most gangster nerd on YouTube, and I'll be seeing you soon enough.